So you're an idea person. You spend all day fixing, solving, deciding, implementing, persuading, no matter your role. And once you strip away all the stuff you do that simply distracts or numbs you under the guise of entertainment, for example, you're faced with the need to create all day long. Really, when you think about it, you and I have got dozens of opportunities to create every week. For some of us, creating is our job. It's our vocation. It certainly is for me. I've loved creating, whether it's writing a YouTube video or a book or building a back deck or building another business or growing a team or growing a group's awareness or solving problems with new ideas and solidifying deep relationships. It's all about small, creative, acts. So if you're watching these videos, you're probably a leader or a manager or a supervisor. Even if you don't hold any of those titles or positions, you probably lead someone or manage something and help others get better at what they're doing. You have a great deal of influence with a few people. Doing that requires creativity. So you might think, yeah, I'm not really all that creative. I'm not a creative type. I don't paint or I don't sculpt or I don't design. I couldn't create my way out of a paper bag that was created by someone else. <laughs> well, to quote the philosopher Inigo Montoya, you keep using that word. I don't think it means what you think it means. <laughs> so kind of as a sidebar, half of what I've learned in life comes from the movie, The Princess Bride. So maybe now that you know that, you're gonna wanna roll your eyes and fast forward to the end of this video and search for someone more sophisticated than me. <laughs> There's a lot of great YouTube stuff out there from people who are more sophisticated than I am. So anyway, you, know, you might want to try that stuff out if, if, if that word doesn't mean what you think it means. <laughs> anyway, away from Princess Bride and back to now. Creativity. It's what you do all day long. You need to get two people to agree on a path forward at work. Creativity. You need to figure out how to sharpen your time and your energy management skills. Creativity. You need to manage emotional pressure better. You got it. Creativity. You need to get your boss or your board or your big idea to move forward. Creativity. Do you need to make dinner tonight and there's not much left in the refrigerator or in the cupboard, but you're hungry now and everyone's hungry now? <laughs> the dog's even hungry now? Creativity. So I remember a time when I was growing up when my mother ran out of some of the basic spices while she was making spaghetti for the ravenous horde that was my family growing up. And so she decided to add cinnamon and a dash of sugar to, to the spaghetti. It was an epic success. <laughs> Try it. You might fail a few times before you succeed, but it was phenomenal spaghetti. I remember another time when we were out of mayonnaise as kids we were growing up. We were out of mayonnaise. And so she decided, being creative, to add peanut butter to the tuna sandwiches. Epic fail. <laughs> peanut butter, good. Tuna, good. Together, bad. But generally, she was pretty good at being creative. Anyway, you get the idea. You are a creative person. Perhaps you're like my friend Lori, who created a phenomenal leadership team. Or maybe you're like my friend Cheryl, who created an entirely new workplace culture. Maybe you're like my friend Leslie and her team who created an amazing online, up-to-date, accurate encyclopedia of American politics. You want to know who's running for what and what they stand for? Go to Ballotpedia and you're going to find it. Pretty impressive feat of perpetual creativity. I don't know, maybe you're like Keith. He's a highly energetic and creative member of one of my teams. I can see the necessity rise in him as he focuses on a challenge. He leans in, he thinks, downshifts, tests, and then creates. What he's created at work and at home is nothing short of impressive. Or maybe you're like my business partner, Donnie, who I talk about on these videos a lot. He stepped in during a really dark time for our businesses and our family and helped us create a new future. No small feat. He also engaged during the height of COVID pandemic and he created a beautiful place where his family and friends gather on a regular basis. Very creative. So these people are inspiring to me 
And when I asked most of them if they think of themselves as creative, they all paused and thought about it for a moment and then said, well, I guess so. I, I really don't paint a masterpiece and, and, I, and I don't write big long books or something like that, but I guess I'm creative. All of those people and a whole lot more are probably, including you, are really inspiring to me. And they're creative and they're tenacious at the same time. So think about yourself this way. Large or small, you create every day. It's who you are. It's what you do. But here's the question I want to ask you. What if you get stuck? What if you need to create, but you can't? Your creative juices are all dried up. What then? You've learned, worked at it, you tried, you've leaned in, you're grinding away, and you got nothing. You took a break, you re-engaged, nothing. The need to create may grow and grow and grow, and the pressure on you is going to grow with that growing need, and you got nothing. What then? Well, here's what I've learned. Whenever I get stuck, these lessons come to mind, and this is what I've practiced. Maybe these five things will help you when you get stuck. First, check yourself. The magic is in the margins. We even have a video about that and we'll link it right over here. Creativity grows out of the rich garden of margins. Do you have time margins? If not, ruthlessly eliminate hurry in your life. Take that challenge very seriously. Hurry is an epidemic. It's killing us. Fight it. Rushing from one thing to another from the time that you wake up until the time you flop into bed every single night does not fuel creativity. Here's the second thing I've learned. Steward carefully the noise in your life. Turn off the noise of other people's emotional opinions. Turn off the distractions of the digital economy that is actually built on fear. It's a fear industrial complex that we live in now. See it for what it is. Turn off the noise. Literally give yourself silence every day. Look for places where that's possible to do. Maybe it's in your car or early mornings or walks at lunch or Sundays. Do you think that, that Michelangelo could have created the works in the Sistine Chapel and other things if he had Netflix or Instagram? or a chirping smartphone in his pocket 18 hours a day? Here's the third thing that I've learned. Get hungry. It's okay to be hungry. Watch carefully your habit of over-consuming. Creativity cannot grow when we are satisfied, when we are full. When we're so full from over-consumption that we're numb. We aren't content and energized. We are, we are actually just sloppy in our contentment. <laughs> when we have so much that we consume, we end up getting numb by what we consume. In small ways and in large ways, discipline yourself to step away from the literal and the metaphorical table and go hungry a little while. We've got a lot to learn from the wise ones of old. They knew that creativity grows best when we're hungry. Plato is the one who famously wrote, our need will be the authentic creator. Down through the ages, you've heard the translation of that, and, and I like this even better. You've heard this, it comes right from Plato. Necessity is the mother of invention. If we never allow ourselves to feel hungry, to feel those deeper needs and the real necessities of life, that vine of creativity will never grow. It's because it's choked out by that numbing weed of constant plenty. Something to think about. It's good to be hungry. Fourth, Organize your life so that creativity flourishes in the face of resistance. Create structures like the trellis 
for a grapevine that support your need to be creative. That trellis is made up of the three things above that I just mentioned, the margins, the silence, embracing hunger. But that trellis is also made up of your own willpower, your decision to lean in and create. This is crucial. We've all experienced it. When we decide we're going to create something, we experience resistance to that creative work. I experience that resistance as soon as I start the work. Not when I'm imagining the work, not when I'm dreaming about it, but when I actually lean in and start it. And then it goes away. Then I experience it again, part way through the work, kind of in a trough in the middle of the work, and then it goes away. And then I experience that resistance again, most profoundly when I'm almost finished with the creative work. And that resistance comes in many forms. Stephen Pressfield, in the great book, I highly recommend it, I read it every year, called Do the Work. He says, resistance is a repelling force. It's negative. Its aim is to shove us away, to distract us, to prevent us from doing our creative work. He goes on to write that resistance is what keeps an entrepreneur from making the calls that he knows he needs to make to get his business rolling. It's the force that keeps an aspiring painter away from her studio or makes a writer back off from the blank page. Resistance stops us from going to the gym, from meditating, from donating our time to a cause we believe in. Pressfield's got a point. Resistance takes on many forms, the most pernicious of which is in our own inner narrator. It's like the voice in our head that says, not now, do it later. I don't feel like it. I'll wait till I feel more creative. That inner voice might be saying, I'm not a creative person. Or it's not worth it. Or it won't work. It'll fail. You're going to create more work for yourself. And on and on and on. That resistance is the most pernicious of all forms that it takes when we step in to be creative. So build a trellis of discipline and promise yourself that when, when, not if, you experience resistance, you'll just keep going. Oh, that's resistance. I recognize that. I'm just going to keep going. So build a trellis of discipline and promises. Replace I'll try with I will. Replace later with now. Build a trellis also of partnerships. Even Michelangelo had partners. He didn't do everything alone. History records his genius, but it also, in some more subtle records of history, records that he regularly had a dozen or more people working with him constantly in his work. He was the one on the scaffolding on his back, holding the brushes and the blades all by himself, but his help was never far away. So be like him. Bring others into your creativity at the points where resistance is the greatest. Your promises to do the work of creativity, creativity will then become promises to those people as well. So here's the fifth thing I've learned. You want to get unstuck? You want to engage and continue to be creative? Celebrate. Burnout arises from pointless, purposeless, incomplete work cycles. Complete your creativity by pausing when you're finished and celebrating. Admire the thing of beauty that you created. It didn't exist before you created it. Admire it. You're not admiring yourself as some amazing person with an arrogantly raised eyebrow. Aren't I amazing? Ah, what good is that? But admire, celebrate both the need that gave rise to the creative impulse and the thing that you created. That spreadsheet didn't exist before you created it. That window into reality represented by that arrangement of data into information and knowledge didn't exist. That relationship that you have didn't exist before you created it. That recipe, that approach, that system, that governing board, that new radio system, that program, I don't know, that video, <laughs> that website, that entire enterprise, none of those existed until you created them. So celebrate them. 
Celebrate your creation and celebrate when others create with you. The act of celebration will fuel your next creative endeavor. Huh. Momentum's a thing. Well, there you have it. Five things you can do to get unstuck and get creative again. One, create margins. Two, create silence. Three, get hungry and stay hungry. Four, resist resistance. Build trellises of promises with other people. And five, celebrate. You've got important creative work to do. We need you to do it. Maybe if you stick with it, you, what you create will be as amazing as my mother's cinnamon laced spaghetti. <laughs> hey, you got good work to do. Keep it up. Here's to you.